all living creatures function by electrochemical signals. Here's the question. How are we affected by electromagnetic radiation emitted by electronics? That's the big question. The book was an amazing opportunity for me to talk with scientists and physicians and community activists and lawyers from all over the globe who are looking at this question and to put their concerns together in one piece. In the 1930s, when we formed the FCC, it, it defined harmful interference. Harmful interference is anything that interferes with existing radio or TV broadcasts. In the mid-90s, they added internet broadcasts to that definition. So you can invent anything you want and bring it to the marketplace, anything electronic, as long as it does not interfere with existing radio or TV broadcasts or internet broadcasts. What we've neglected is to include biological harm in this definition. Say that a telecom company wants to install an antenna on a school um, or on a private property in your town. If your city councilors, if it is believed that your city councilors deny that permit because of health concerns or environmental concerns for your community, the telecom company can sue your town. The first time, perhaps, that people really started recognizing that living creatures could be affected by electronics, in 1958, the first cardiac pacemaker was installed in a person. And over the next 10 years, people with pacemakers would go to restaurants, for example, and if there was a microwave oven on the other side of that wall, their cardiac pacemaker would shut off. And people complained about this a lot. And then finally in 1971, the FDA made a rule that said that restaurants had to post a sign that said there was a microwave oven on the other side of the wall. That was perhaps one of the first demonstrations of interference from one electronic device, a microwave oven, to another electronic device, a cardiac pacemaker, we have created a situation that we do not understand because we've now flooded our environment with electromagnetic radiation. My desire is for many people to join this discussion that the book has initiated and say, okay, here are the questions I've got, here are the things I don't understand, Here's what I'd like to know more about. Um, certainly everyone is concerned about his and her own health and their, fam their children's health, and we, we all want to know how to live safely with these things. And that means, in the, in the name of Rachel Carson, really, that we need to invite humility to join us in this discussion, in our asking questions, what, what do we do? Not understanding fully what we've created.